Hey everybody, Chris here, and today I am going to teach you everything you need to know about the shape panel in Tinkercad. But before we get started, I just wanted to mention, I've done another video where I use everything in this video and others to create a full project from concept to 3D print in just under 30 minutes. So after you're done here, head over to watch that video so you can see how you can combine all of these tools to create your 3D models in Tinkercad. So we're here in Tinkercad and this video is all about your shapes panel. I wanted to go through some of the shapes and give you ideas of how you can use some of these shapes and some of the modifications that you can do to them. So if you want a shape, all you do is click on it and drag it over to your work plane and then just let go. Once you drag over a shape, this dialog box will show up and every single shape you have will have a dialog box. So if we just drag these over, every time I click on it, it's going to show us the dialog box. Now you're going to notice on some shapes, there are no attribute settings on them. Other shapes do. So let's just zoom into this box and I'm going to hit F or you can hit this button over here, fit to view. Now let's just turn on the side here and let's look at this shape. Now, there are a few settings here when it comes to a box. Now, obviously, you have your length, your width, and your height. You can actually adjust them all right here, or you could just click on the little black nodes or white nodes to change the sizes of them. But if you want to just type it in, you can hit 20 there, and then there is our box again. So the first thing up here, you'll see your radius and your radius will actually give you a rounded corner. So if I turn this up a little bit, you'll see it's starting to round the corner and it's actually more of a bevel. That's where you have to look at your steps. And if you increase your steps, it's actually going to increase your poly count. And that's the amount of segments in the shape. So if I crank this up a bit, it's going to make it a very smooth looking cube with nice rounded corners. So when you're looking at all of these different shapes, you're going to see radius and steps throughout. And just think, if you have a lot of steps, you're going to have a very smooth shape. But if you have very few steps, you're going to have a very blocky looking shape. So let's bring in a sphere. And if you look at this, it already has steps right here, but nothing else. Because whatever you scale this to, that is just going to be the size. But if you increase your steps, you can make this a lot smoother of a sphere and also bring it down and make it even looking like some type of dice for D&D. Now, I won't go through all of these because a lot of these either don't have any settings or they have a few settings. So for the cone, for example, you can mess with your top radius, you can mess with your base, you can mess with the height, and also your, the amount of sides you have to have it super smooth or if you just want a triangle. Now some of the interesting ones, like text, you can get some really cool effects with. So if we just swing around here, you can see right here it says text. So let's do this. Mead, and then I just click off, I can hit F, let's bring that in the middle. Now you can see it's just type this out and I can actually control the height of this or I can make it very skinny. Then we also have the bevel and segments and this is where you got to kind of watch how you use it because bevel, if you see, it's getting bigger. And why it's getting bigger is because there's no segments. So if you look at the segments and we start increasing those, it'll start rounding those corners. You can see right there. So we bring it up and with text, you can't get a lot of segments. You can only go up to five, but that will make it nice and round for you. Then you can honestly just keep messing with your bevel so if you have a small bevel, it's going to make a super smooth corner, but if you make a large bevel, it's going to make it look really blocky. 
You can also change the different fonts. There aren't a lot of font options, but you can change them. And one really cool thing is if you're ever trying to make a plaque and 3D print it, you can just bring in a box, stretch that box out to the size you want, shrink it down, then you can just align this, and there you go, you got a nice plaque to 3D print. So let's say, let's make it my green, make it my white, and there we go. And that's the other thing. If you ever want to change the colors of your objects, you can do it right here. You can also make them transparent. Making things transparent is actually really nice to do sometimes, especially when you've got objects inside of other objects, so you know where they're at. And then you just have to click on it. Then all you do is click this transparent button again, and it will go back to a solid object. So they give you a wide array of colors to choose from, but if you want a specific color, you can go to custom, and then you can actually create the specific color you're looking for, or even put in a hex value, which is really nice. So if you're ever wanting to make a little plaque, this is a really great way to just make one really quick. And the last thing I wanted to show you is the scribble tool. So the scribble tool, once you drop it down onto your plane, it's going to show you a very top view of whatever you're drawing. And in your top right corner, you get a three-dimensional preview of what you're actually drawing. At the very bottom here, you have your undo, you have a redo, then you have your draw tool. And let's stay on that and I'll show you what you can do. So essentially, if you want, you can draw whatever shape you want and it will automatically make it a three-dimensional object. So it is extruding this to make your own 3D object. So once your draw tool is enabled, you can actually just draw whatever you want. So let's just draw Mead. And there we go. This is a really good example of how bad my handwriting is with a mouse. But you can draw whatever you want and make little squiggles and things like that. But if you've made a mistake, you can come over here to the erase tool and the erase tool will erase whatever you've drawn. Now, the one thing I've realized while using this is I don't like how the scribble tool will only give you one thickness. I really do wish it could be thinner or thicker, but this is really all it does in thickness. But you can go with an eraser and erase away some of that if you're trying to make thinner lines. There's also the draw shape tool, and that is really just a lasso tool. So whatever I'm drawing right now, it's going to make it a three-dimensional object, and I can kind of trace along and make just a squiggly shape, and then all you do is let go, and it will automatically create that for you. And you can see this kind of craziness that we're creating right here. And when it comes to erasing, I use the Erase with Shape tool more than the Erase tool. Because you can select around anything you want and it will erase it as soon as you let go of the mouse button. So let's say we don't want any of this stuff. I can get rid of that. Get rid of that. And then once you're done, all you hit is this Done button in the bottom right corner. Or you can hit clear, and that'll clear your entire workspace. So let's go ahead and hit done. And now you can see I have my name right there. So I can increase the height, and that's really the only setting you have here. But I can go back into this, and I can edit it. So if I wanted to put a line underneath it, then I hit done. So there we go. And you can still transform this however you want, but the only setting you have is your height. Now the other thing is, is you'll see that there is a box and a cylinder, and they're kind of grayed out with lines through it. When you drag that down, you're automatically going to be creating a hole. So you can also do it with a regular shape, you just have to click hole. 
And now most of the time when I'm creating things for my 3D prints, I'm using the basic shapes because the basic shapes can create so many different things when you use them together. But if you click on your basic shapes right here, it will pop up this dialog box to show you other types of shapes and models that you can bring in. For example, design starters. If you wanted a gift wrapped box right here, there you go. But you can see here, there are already some pre-made shapes that you can start with. So these are the design starters. The nice thing in the hardware is they have these pre-made ball and joint sockets that you can actually make, scale them down, and 3D print these. So you could add these to your models to 3D print. But I definitely encourage you to kind of look through these different shapes to see what there is, because you never know. Something you need might already be created for you. For example, a tire. So that's everything I think you should know when it comes to all of the shapes and the options you have when using shapes. And that's everything you need to know about the shapes panel in Tinkercad. Now be sure to head over and watch the full project video so you can see how this tool and all of the others work together in Tinkercad. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in this video right here.